For this video, we're going to talk about the principles of counterstrain. Uh, regardless of where you're doing counterstrain and where the points are, uh, we follow a script when we perform counterstrain. So I'm not going to go over the specific positioning for every single tender point. That's something that can be looked up in a book. Uh, rather, we're going to talk about the general rules that we follow regardless of which point we're using. Um, first order of business is always to locate a tender point. This is usually done uh, by poking in the classical positions where the tender points are located. We're going to use the cervical spine as our example. Uh, so in this case, the anterior cervical tender points are located along the transverse processes. And we're going to ask the patient if any of these are tender. So is that tender right there? A little bit. Yes. So if we the patient says that the point is tender, then we are going to establish that that is our tender point that we're going to treat. Um, this is on the transverse process of C4, so this is an anterior C4 tender point on the right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to tell the patient that we are assigning this pain a 10 out of 10. So whatever you feel right now, we're going to call that 10 out of 10. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to maintain our uh, position with this finger, and then we're going to take the patient and place them into the classical treatment position, whatever that may be. In this particular case, it's going to be uh, flex, side bend away, and rotate away. And from this position, uh, if it was a 10 before, what is it now? A uh, 1. A 1. And ideally, we want to get to a 0. So from here, we're going to fine tune slightly. So if I add a little more side bending, a little more rotation, how about now? 0. 0. So once we establish that it was a 10 and now it's a 0, this is the position we're going to hold passively for 90 seconds. And then after our 90 seconds are complete, we're going to ask the patient to stay completely relaxed. We're going to slowly and passively return them back to neutral. And then from the neutral position, we're going to reassess one more time. So if it was a 10 when we started, what is it now? One. A 1. So if, based off that, we could say that we had a 90% reduction of that tender point. Uh, the main points with this, again, are that once you establish where the tender point is, you never want to move your finger from that point. It doesn't mean that you need to mash on that point for the entire time. It just means you want to keep your finger stable so that no matter where you position yourself, you're not, you're not losing your spot. Because if I pick my finger up and put it back, very unlikely that I'm going to contact the exact same spot that I was uh, originally. We also want to be sure that this is passive at all times. The patient should be completely relaxed. Um, and so we should be able to move them. And importantly, too, we also need to maintain control of that patient um, through the entire encounter. So if I'm trying to balance his entire head just on my fingertips, you know, my fingertips are going to get pretty tired by the end of 90 seconds. So we want to make sure that we're bracing ourselves using the table when we can to try to prevent ourselves from fatiguing uh, over the course of the treatment uh, and so that we can hold the patient really securely over the course of that 90 seconds. So regardless of the tender point, we're going to locate it. We're going to assign whatever the patient feels a 10 out of 10. We're going to start with the classical position and then try to fine tune uh, to get it down to a 0 out of 10, ideally. Uh, once we find that position, we're going to hold it for 90 seconds. At the completion of 90 seconds, we're going to slowly, passively return the patient back to neutral, and then we're going to reassess that tender point. Um, those are the general rules of counter strain, regardless of location.